Hey everyone, Troy Hurd with Cedar Creek Dulcimers again. Say, before we get into our next lesson series on chord melody plan, I wanted to take some time out to get into the informational and technical things all at once. So when we get to the actual lessons, we can just have fun and concentrate on learning our songs in our new keys and our new scale patterns. So those of you who do not care how the sausage is made, you don't have to sit through all the technical things for every lesson. But for those of you who do want to know exactly how the scales work and where those new scales are located on the dulcimer, that's what we're going to get into in this little video right now. Now you may or may not have noticed, but all the dulcimers I play, with the exception of the six and a half fret, have a traditional dulcimer fretboard. I don't have a one and a half fret, I don't have an eight and a half fret and so forth. Now two reasons why I can get by without those frets and still play those same songs and those same scales. Number one, it's just simply the tuning. For example, I know a lot of people, the reason why they like the one and a half fret when they're in the DAD tuning is it gives them a lower G scale. But when I'm in the traditional Ionian tuning in the key of G, for example, I already have, I already have that low G scale, even without that extra fret, by simply using the original tuning. The second reason is chord melody playing. And that's the reason why it's become my preferred style of playing, is because I'm able to access other scales that are on my dulcimer, and which allows me to play those songs that need those extra notes. Uh, for example, Oh Joe Clark. That was one of the first songs years ago that started me searching out the other scale patterns that are on my dulcimer. People would say, well, I need an eight and a half fret it added to my dulcimer so I can play Ojo Clark in the traditional tuning. And if we're trying to use our number one scale, the scale that we're actually tuned to, that would be correct. When we get to the chorus, we need a half step on that third note. But my idea was, well, I do actually have built-in half steps already on my traditional dulcimer. So what I need to do is relocate the song so that third note is using one of my half steps that is already there. And sure enough, there's Ojo Clark in the traditional tuning without adding an eight and a half fret to my dulcimer. So I started searching for other scales when I needed other frets as well. And that's what first developed this chord melody style playing back years ago. So that's the number one reason why I like to use this style of playing. It's become my preferred style of playing. Is the fact that I can play all those different songs without having to add any extra frets to my dulcimer, with the exception of the six and a half fret. And also the number two reason is, it allows me to play melodies in all kinds of keys. Now, in the last lesson, we learned how to chord in all kinds of different keys. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to play melodies in different keys. Now, what that does, two different things that that does. Not only it gives your, your songs just a little more character, a little more flavor. They don't sound so monotonous, just playing every tune in the same key every time. After a while, the songs kind of start sounding like the same song over and over again when we're playing everything in the same key every time. So by accessing the other scales, we're able to play melodies in different keys, and it not only makes it more interesting for the listener, but for us, the player, as well. The other thing it allows us to do is change keys in the middle of our melodies very easily. So to kind of demonstrate real quickly how we can play the same melody in our different scale positions, play it in the different keys, I'm going to take the same tune, uh, a first little bit of Amazing Grace, and I'm going to play it in four of those different scale patterns. I'm going to start with the fifth scale pattern. So for me, G, A, B, C, D, that's D. Then I'm going to move to the fourth scale pattern, so the key of C. Then I'm going to move to the second, the key of A. And then I'm going to end up in the first scale pattern, the key of G, which is the key that I'm tuned to. So we're going to start in that fifth pattern. I'm going to use the upper version of the scale. <laughs> key on 
I'm tuned to. So you can see how easy it is to, to switch keys right in the middle of the song and play the melody in a different key pattern. Now what that does is it allows us to, to hear the different voices of the instrument. So a lot of times when I'm learning how to play a new song, I'll usually first of all find it in my first scale position, but then I'll try it in some of them other positions to see if I feel like my dulcimer sings the song better using one of those other scale patterns. Okay, so let's dive in and learn where those new scale positions are on our dulcimer. Then the next position we're going to spend some time with is our second position scale. So since I'm tuned to G, for me it's an A scale. Now it starts on the fourth fret, and, and we can play either the major or the minor version of the scale. Now first of all, I'm going to show you the, the minor version of the scale. So for me this would be an A minor scale. So as you can see, it starts on the fourth fret. The next note is on the fifth fret. Then we go to the sixth fret, and then it pops over to the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, and the eleventh fret. That's our first octave of our A minor scale, or for me it's an A minor scale, and then of our second position minor scale is the way I should put it. But then we also have all those notes down below, so we got another full half octave down below us that we can use as well. So pretty much with the exception of the six and a half fret, every note that's on there on my melody line works in that A minor scale. So any song that's written in A minor, you're able to play it on your dulcimer. Okay, now in my second position, I also have a major scale. And so for me, since I'm in G, that would be an A major scale. Now, as you can see from the diagram that where the notes of the major scale are located. And this time I'm using Do, Re, Mi since it is in the major scale. It helps us to see easier where the scale starts and stops. It starts on the fourth fret, for example. That's Do, Re, and then the six and a half is Mi, Fa, So, La. Now in between La, T, and Do, there is that extra half step here. Then you'll notice that down below the notes, once again, between those same two notes is that extra half step once again. And then also here at the sixth fret, we have another half step. Now, this is the scale I like to use when I got a song that needs a one and a half fret, for example, or believe it or not, a, uh, it would need a, a four and a half fret normally. And I'm gonna save that one for when we get into learning our actual song. We're gonna play a song that uses that four and a half fret to show you what I'm talking about. But for example, Norwegian Wood. Normally, if you was trying to play it in the, in the number one scale position that you're tuned to, you get to a point in the song where you would need that one and a half fret. But since I'm using my second position, this note becomes that one and a half fret. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. The song would start here. And then here's that half step. So there's that what would be equivalent to the one and a half fret. So by just simply accessing that second scale pattern, that note that you would normally be looking for is already on your dulcimer using one of the half steps that's already there. Now, because these two frets are there, however, you're missing one note of your A major scale. So for example, the song like Norwegian Wood, it would have to be a song that wouldn't need that one particular note anyway. And I found that that's quite common on a lot of songs. They don't need that particular note. So that's where changing it over to that half step for us works out in our favor. So our third scale pattern is a minor scale. And since I'm tuned to G, for me it would be a B minor scale. Well, the B minor scale starts on the fifth fret. And as you can see, the notes run as such. We start on the fifth fret, then we go to the six and a half, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth fret. So that's our first octave of our B minor scale. Then we have all those notes down below, just like we did in the key of A. So we got another half octave down below. So literally any song that's in B minor we're able to play on our dulcimer. So now our fourth scale pattern that we can play melody in. Now for me, since I'm tuned to the key of G, G, A, B, C, C is my fourth scale pattern. 
Now, personally, I don't use this one quite as much to play melody in as I do the other keys, uh, mainly because you have to actually work across the instrument to get the C scale. For example, it starts over here on the third fret on the bass string. There's Do. When we get to the sixth fret, we switch over to the other string in the same pattern, third fret. So there is our C octave right there. So that's one reason why I don't use this too much in chord melody playing, because you might have to cross strings more often. And it's a lot easier when you can just do all your melody on the one line and keep the chords on the other strings, like when I'm using the other scale patterns. However, and this is the song that we're going to play in the lesson, if there are, is a song like Amazing Grace that doesn't need that F note, you can play the whole song on that one line. So you can kind of pick and choose what songs you might want to play in the C scale the ones that don't have that particular note, for example. Uh, otherwise, you may prefer to walk across the strings when you're playing, and then you may like that C scale quite a bit. Okay, now our fifth scale pattern. Now, this is the one I use quite a bit. The ones I would say I have to use the most. My first position, my second, my fifth, and my sixth position. Those are the scale patterns I use most often in most all my play and all the videos that you've heard up to this point. Now, once again, you're probably tired of hearing this, but since I'm in G, G, A, B, C, D is my fifth scale position. Now, I have two different patterns that I can play in depending on what notes I'm looking for for the song. Now, the first pattern starts on the open string. That's Do. And then the first fret, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So that means between La and Ti, I have that extra half step. Well, that's the one that would be equivalent to the eight and a half fret. So when I'm playing a song like that old Joe Clark and I need a song that uses that eight and a half fret, I'll use that fifth position scale pattern so that note will be there. Little Drummer Boy, you know, uh, that's another song that would use that note. So any song that really needs an eight and a half fret, that's the scale pattern that I like to use. Now you have a second scale position in that same key as well. So let me go back over the first position one more time. We start open. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Now we end it on the seventh fret. So the next pattern will start where that one ends. So we got Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T, do. So we got a higher octave of that same scale position. Now, what that gives us though is low notes. So if you have a lot of low notes in the song that you're wanting to play using that scale position, if you start the scale here, we have all those we have all those low notes down below it that we can still play on the one line. When we're in the first pattern, Do is the lowest note, so we have, to, we have to work across the strings to get the other low notes. So if you're wanting to play a song, if you're wanting to play a song that needs those lower notes, then you can use that upper scale pattern of your fifth pattern, and you can still play everything on the one line without having to cross strings. And once again, the other thing it does is it turns this fret in to a one and a half fret for. So again, if you're playing a song that needs a one and a half fret and an eight and a half fret, you got them both in this scale pattern. Okay, now we're going to look at that final six scale position. Now, it makes it a minor scale for us. That's what we're going to use the most often in this in this sixth position is a minor scale. And again, since I'm in G, G, A, B, C, D, E, for me, it's an E minor scale. Well, as you can see, it starts on the first fret. There's our E. And then the second fret, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth fret. So that's our first octave of our E minor scale. And as you can see, with the exception of the six and a half fret, every note makes that E minor scale. So once again, any song that's written in E minor, you're going to be able to play. Now, what about a major scale from this same pattern? Well, we can technically play a major scale in this pattern in the number six position, but we're missing two of the notes to make a full scale. So 
what that would have to do is one or two things. The song would either not have to have those notes or because those two notes are missing, it does give us some extra half steps that we wouldn't normally have though. So what I find, if you wanna play major scale songs in this scale pattern, it helps if they're a bluesy song if they're, or a jazz tune. Then those notes that are missing and replaced with our half steps actually will work in your favor. Now, for those of you who may not quite understand still how all of this works, when we're playing in our first position scale, that's the key that we're tuned to. That's what we've been doing from the very beginning ever since we've been doing our one finger playing style. The reason why we don't have to touch those other strings is because we're playing in the key that they're tuned to. So when we start switching to these other keys, we're no longer playing in the same key that our other strings are tuned to, so that's where the chording comes in. For example, that same Amazing Grace in my fourth position, which would be my C scale. If I was to try to not chord those other strings, here's what it would sound like. And, and we can tell that doesn't work at all. Those strings aren't harmonizing whatsoever. So that's why we go ahead and add the chord in along with it. these other scales because we're adding the chords that correspond with that new key that we're playing in. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's about enough information for now. I'm ready to get back into playing some actual songs once again. But just to let you know, I have broken up this lesson series into six different parts. And in each part, we're going to be learning how to play a song in each one of our new scale positions. We're going to be starting off with the six minor scale positions because it was a little diddly called E Mazing G that I came up with a while back to actually be an exercise for teaching chord melody playing. So hope you have lots of fun with this and we'll see you next time.